Yo, what is going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this beautiful ash end grain cutting board with a walnut inlay. This board came out absolutely amazing and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Be sure to stick around till the end of the video and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I made it. Okay, before we start making the board, here's my design that I came up with. I basically just got an image off of Google and then I turned it into an SVG file and that way I could upload it into Fusion 360 and have it cut out. And these are the tool paths that I'm using to mill out the pocket. This is actually the first inlay that I've ever done so I'm keeping the design nice and simple, um, nothing too big or anything like that. And I think I picked a good image but uh, with that being said let's jump right into it. Alright, the first thing that I'm going to do is cut up this six quarter ash into manageable size pieces and that way I can run it through the table saw and create strips. Um, I was actually originally going to make this board out of maple, uh, but the hardwood store that I go to was having such a good deal on ash that day that I couldn't really pass it up. Um, and I ended up liking the ash even more than I thought I would, especially once I get the mineral oil and all of that onto the board. It really darkens it up and it still provides a really good um, contrast to the walnut inlay and that is exactly what I was going for. This piece of ash that I picked up was actually milled flat on both sides and one edge. So right now I'm just cutting off the rough side and just making sure that it's nice and square. Alright, now that my board is nice and square, I can run it through the table saw and create one inch strips. I'm trying to maximize as much yield as I can out of this board because I want to make multiple boards. And because of that, for the final size of the board, I don't want it to be too big. So from what I read on Google, the standard size is about 10 by 13 inches long and that's what I'm going to be making this board. After orienting the boards in the way that I want them, it was time to apply the glue. Uh, I'm using Type Bond 3 for this project because it's waterproof and food safe. So I always use Type Bond 3 for cutting boards and you'll see most people do the same. Um, and I'm also using a silicone brush to spread the glue around. It makes it a lot easier and just making sure that I get all of the edges nice and coated. After the glue was applied, I could get everything clamped up with equal clamping pressure on all sides. Um, I usually use calls on the ends of the board just to keep everything nice and flat, but these boards went together so nicely I didn't even really need that. After the glue dried, I came back the next day and I scraped up all the excess glue squeeze out on top of the board and that way I could run it through my planer and get it flat again on both sides. <laughs> if you guys have ever wondered why I don't have dust collection running to all my tools in the shop, it's because I have a really tiny shop and I only have one electrical outlet and trying to run my planer and my dust collection at the same time just does not work it just reduces the power of the planer by like 50 to 75 percent and it just does not work well so if you ever wonder why i don't have dust collection on all my tools that is why <laughs> i usually just let my chips and dust go all over the floor and then i just vacuum it after uh, which isn't the safest practice but i usually almost always wear a dust mask in my shop i just don't have a whole lot of options because i don't have a whole lot of power and electrical outlets that go in my shop right now Alright, as you guys can see now, I'm just squaring up all the edges of the board on my crosscut sled. And then I'm going to put a stop block about an inch and an eighth thick because that's about how thick I want my board. I want it to be roughly an inch and I'm making it a little bit bigger because I'm going to flatten both sides on my CNC. After I cut my first strip, I like to measure it and that way I can make sure that my crosscut sled is dialed in and everything is nice and accurate. So 
So it didn't really occur to me until the final glue up, but I wasn't a huge fan of the way that I oriented and patterned this board. Um, this piece of ash just had a lot of dark rings and I made it way too symmetrical and I just honestly I didn't think it looked very good. So I decided to put this board off to the side and repeat the whole process over choosing much lighter pieces and making a new board because I really wanted that walnut inlay to contrast well and I'm glad I did because the next board that I made turned out really nice and this board is not going to go to waste however I'm going to be giving this board away to my secret Santa for Christmas. For the walnut we pretty much repeat the same exact process except we cut the strips a little bit thinner only about three quarters of an inch thick because the walnut plug doesn't have to be very thick and then from there we can head on over to the CNC machine and start milling. The first thing that we're going to do is flatten both sides of the board and to do this we're going to be using my DIY homemade 3D printed CNC machine. And I have a really good series of videos um, showing you guys exactly how I built this machine if you want to check it out. And also I finally just released the plans for this CNC machine. So if you're interested in building something like this for yourself, you can do that. You can find that down in the description. Um, but with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, as you guys can see the inlay came out absolutely perfect. Cutting out the inlay is definitely the most nerve wracking thing of the entire project just because if one thing goes wrong with the CNC it can completely ruin the board and especially when you're using expensive wood like myself you really only have one shot at this so I'm really glad that it came out nice. 
Um, and now I'm just taking it over to the bandsaw and I'm just cutting out the outside perimeter of it. And this will become my plug. Finally, it was time to apply glue and hammer the plug into place. Most people use VCarve software to create inlays, but I just use Fusion 360 because it's free and VCarve you have to pay for. And there's not a whole lot of tutorials out there um, on how to create inlays in Fusion 360. So I had to do a lot of test boards and really dial in my own technique to create the tightest tolerance that I could to uh, insert the plug. And that way it fits nice and snug. After I hammered the plug into place, I just added a few clamps off camera. While the glue was drying, I decided I want to make my own cutting board butter. And there are plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube that show you how to do this. This isn't my idea, but it just consists of mineral oil and beeswax. And you kind of just melt them together in a crock pot and stir it up. And then you can put it into uh, four inch tins like I did. Um, and then you just kind of let that sit there and cool off and then it'll solidify into a nice butter. The next day I came back to remove all the excess walnut on top of the board and this Texas weather, I mean one day it's 90 degrees and then the next day it's 40. And I came back to find out that my board had a little bit of a warp. So I had to take it over to the CNC and reflatten it. I mean, my only guess is that because I laid the board flat on the table, the top of the board was able to dry faster than the bottom, which caused the warp. Uh, but it wasn't too big of a deal. I just took it over to the CNC and reflattened it. If you've ever sanded end grain before, you know it takes a ton of time. Uh, I wish I had a drum sander, but I don't. The belt sander works just fine though, and it also removes a lot of the lines that were left behind on the CNC. After that, I use my orbital sander and I start with 120 grit and I work my way all the way up to 320. And this is the first good look at the board. It looks really good. Uh, the walnut plug looks to fit perfect, um, which is exactly what I was going for. To sand the sides, I usually don't like to use my orbital sander because I don't want to break those edges. Uh, so I usually just use a sanding block with some sandpaper and I just do it by hand and it creates a really nice flat surface. So I was really bouncing around the idea of whether I should do a round over or a chamfer on this board. Uh, but ultimately I decided to go with the chamfer and I think it came out really good. My router did leave a few burn marks on the corners, but after I routed everything, I just hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. I apply two to three coats of mineral oil on both sides of the board and I just really allow that oil to soak in. Uh, the way the color changes looks super nice. When making cutting boards I always recommend putting some type of wax finish onto the board. It makes it super water resistant and it just overall prolongs the life of the board and it gives it a really nice matte finish. The last thing that I had to do is install the rubber feet and this board was ready to go. I'm going to be giving this board away for Christmas, it's going to be a nice little surprise. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys on the next one.